hello, hello. All right, cool. Well, welcome to uh, my talk on Flutter Web. Uh, before I get started, how many people have experienced Flutter before? Have developed in Flutter? Okay, great. So, not too many, but not everyone. That's awesome. One time I did a talk called um, Advanced Android, and everyone there was an iOS developer, and it was a terrible talk because no one kind of knew. I assumed that they kind of thought that, hey, I know iOS, I can kind of just jump ahead and do Advanced Android, but it was a weird talk. So, you know, I just wanted to make sure that everyone's done Flutter Web here and like an expert Flutter developer. Cool. All right. So, uh, who are you listening to? I'm a Google developer expert for Flutter. I also do Dart, Android, machine learning, whatever. Um, I'm a co-founder at this company called DYDX. We do API anomaly monitoring. And previously, I was at a uh, CTO at a company called Zoom.ai, where we did um, NLP, natural language parsing and stuff. Forget about that. So Flutter, where did it come from? It was, it was a couple of years ago. I was uh, been doing Dart for a long time. And uh, I was invited to talk at DartCon for one of these Dart conferences uh, in Munich. And they talked about Eric Seidel, who is the product manager of Chrome at the time, I believe, or lead engineer at Chrome, came onto the stage and started talking about something that they've been working on, Flutter for mobile. And I originally got excited because I was doing a lot of Dart, and I thought Dart was going to be, uh, Dart was replacing Java as the official language for Android, because I've been doing Android for a long, long time. So I thought, cool, my two worlds are going to merge. That didn't happen. But what happened was they announced this something called Sky. And uh, Sky uh, was this very uh, secretive project at Google where they wanted to understand how to build apps better. And what they did was, the way Google works internally is they kind of work like a startup in a lot of ways where each team, uh, if it comes up with a problem, it has to actually validate the problem and go out and ask people, are you gonna use this? So Google, what this team did at Google was they started going around and asking people, hey, we have a problem, uh, we use, we build too many mobile apps and we waste a lot of time building an Android app and then doing it again the whole second time, right, for an iOS. And so there's a specific team uh, called the CRM team at Google uh, that was building this app and whenever they had new features, they always had to spend a lot of resources on Android and replicate all those resources on iOS. And so they said, can we do better? We're being Google, we have unlimited money, let's just throw money at the problem. And so they hired a bunch of engineers and they started, they made a big Google spreadsheet, I assume, a matrix, and they started asking people, we have this idea, we wanna have this language, uh, this platform that we can just write once, deploy everywhere, what language are you using? And so they got a lot of different answers, Go, Python, Kotlin, Java, whatever, but, and they started asking why use it, and one, language that kept coming up was Dart. And it was used by a tiny team, irrelevant team at Google called Google AdSense uh, that makes zero money at Google. And they asked them, why are you guys using AdSense? I mean, why are you guys using Dart at AdSense? And they said, well, you know, it's productive. Uh, it makes us code faster. We produce a lot less bugs. And Google has metrics for everything, so they had the metrics to show this. And so this team, the Sky team, said, you know what? Dart seems like a pretty good language for this. So now they had the language, and they now needed a way to actually draw these pixels on the screen. And so they started looking at rendering engines, because all Flutter really is, if anyone's ever played games, it's just Unity for apps, right? So just the way you can make apps, make games run on Xbox, PlayStation, mobile phone, that's what Flutter is. And so they said, we need a rendering engine that can do all sorts of stuff for us. We don't want to reinvent the wheel. And they had a rendering engine, actually, that everyone was using. Every single person here is using it. It's called Chrome, right? The rendering engine that powers Chrome, Chrome is everywhere. It's on refrigerators, TVs, mobile, absolutely everywhere, right? And that rendering engine is powerful enough. I'm not talking about V8 or HTML, CSS, but like the actual engine that draws the pixels, whether you're watching Netflix, YouTube, whatever, whatever's being drawn there, that's the rendering engine. So they said, great. We have an awesome rendering engine. We have a great language. Let's just like, you know, in the words of Mike Tyson, get them to kiss and uh, see what happens. And so that's where Sky was born. And then they eventually renamed it to Flutter. If everyone, if someone should ask me the question where the name comes from, I'll tell you guys uh, at the end. So that's how Flutter came to be. So Flutter came out, a lot of people started using it. Um, 
they said, we're going to make this uh, like, we're going to use material design as an original language, design language, so that apps look naturally beautiful. Um, and then they added like support for iOS, UI, but originally it worked absolutely everywhere, right? And it still does on mobile and Android, um, iOS and Android. And so that came out with it, Sky became Flutter, then Beta came out, now we're at like 1.0 for Flutter. And so what's the natural progression of Flutter, right? Google's not gonna be like, cool, we're done, you know, let's just go play some games. They started thinking about what to do next and they got a lot of community um, votes on Flutter should be for web. And what's interesting is Dart did really come from the web. Dart, in its terrible, terrible PR, I don't know who this PR person was, wrote once that Dart's gonna kill JavaScript and that kind of killed Dart uh, in a lot of ways because everyone was like, what? Um, reality was that was never the intention. The intention was to take JavaScript and learn where we, all the um, missteps and all everywhere that JavaScript fails on the web and try to build a better language that can like coexist with JavaScript. Um, but PR got very ambitious and said we're gonna kill it. And so Dart kind of faded away, then it came back because of Flutter. And so they already had a lot of ways to compile Dart to the web, right? There's a great compiler that optimizes the JavaScript and like really produces pretty high performing JavaScript. Just that no one uses it. Um, and so they said, cool, we have Flutter, we have a way to draw apps, how do we convert this to the web? And so they did a lot of thinking and they came up with a way. Now this is the way that exists right now. Maybe this way might change in the future uh, because the asterisk that I should add to this whole thing is Flutter Web is not ready for production. So if you're hoping to go home tonight and build a Flutter Web app, you can, just don't expect it to be like a production ready app. Expect it to be like an alpha ready app, right? Um, I don't know when production one's gonna be, probably March, September, I don't know. Uh, I have actually, I have no idea about it. Um, so, but you know, ju that's jumping ahead. And so what they can do now is you can take the exact same mobile app that you've written in Flutter and you can compile it to be a web app. And I'm gonna show you guys a demo. And then we'll get back to this. Cool, all right. So I'm gonna create a Flutter project. I'm gonna do all this live coding and hopefully nothing breaks. So I'm using an IDE called VS Code. Uh, don't worry if you can't, oh, actually you can see everything, cool. Um, I'm using an IDE called VS Code. You can use IntelliJ, you can use Notepad. I have a crazy friend that uses Vim, uh, which is wild to me. It's like him sitting in the matrix. Um, so unproductive, I don't know what the hell he's doing. But uh, anyways, there's a Vim plugin for Flutter if you wanna do it. You can have to do it anywhere. So I use VS Code. And I use VS Code because I can't afford IntelliJ anymore. Because ever since I started my business, I'm like, gotta cut costs. But I love IntelliJ. Uh, so anyways, I'm gonna create a new project here, Web uh, Flutter, new project, and give a project a name, Web Project Ohio. And I'm going to create a new folder here. Ever since I saw the Dave Chappelle show, whenever I see Ohio, I can only think of that whole last skit. So if you guys haven't seen that, I recommend you watch that. Um, okay, cool. So now what it's doing here is it's going and creating a Flutter project, right? That automatically has support for Android, iOS, and web. And I'll show you how. Here there's an Android folder. And uh, that folder, I'm gonna actually, is my resolution good? Can everyone see this? Okay, cool. So there's an Android folder here. If you dig deep into this Android folder, you're gonna find all the crazy Android stuff. You're gonna find Android manifest, you can find all the Java classes, the jars, whatever the Android has. If you do the same thing with iOS, you're gonna find an Xcode project. You can actually open this up in Xcode or Android Studio for Android projects. So you can do all that. And in the web one, you will find what you find on the web, index.html, right? And if you click index.html, it's just a simple scaffold, right? It just has HTML5 header, uh, title, body, and main.dart.js. That is all, that's all that there is. So I'm gonna run this, and the way you run it is I can go Flutter devices, okay? And when I type Flutter devices, it's gonna tell me all the devices available for me that are currently running for me to run this project. So right now it says Chrome is running and web server is running, right? 
So because I'm deploying to web, I'm gonna deploy to Chrome. And I can also deploy this to iOS. So what I'm gonna also do, just to show you guys, and I'm gonna create an iOS emulator here, uh, Flutter emulators. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna start Flutter run, no. Forget it, oh no. I've done this a million times and I can't remember. Flutter emulators launched, great. All right, so I'm just gonna launch that emulator on the side so we can get back to that. Uh, so I can show you how your app runs everywhere. So we'll leave that. Now I'm gonna go clear this, go back to Flutter devices, right? And it's gonna show me now three devices, iOS, Chrome, and web server. So I'm gonna take Chrome and I'm gonna go Flutter run and pass in the device flag, which is just hyphen D, and I'm gonna say Chrome. And what it's gonna do is it's actually gonna now start compiling this project and running through this tool chain where it takes all my Flutter code and compiles it into HTML and JavaScript. And then it crashes, why? This might have, what? Yeah, no, seriously. <laughs> Hold on, let me just make sure nothing's broken. Cool. I would suck if this broke. Um, cool, there we go. Fingers crossed. Um, no, oh crap. What is this complaining about? No such file package build. All right, I'm gonna open up another file that I had running before. Uh, web project, Ohio. Dude, I knew, I knew something was gonna break. I knew it. So we'll, we'll probably look into why it broke after too, uh, but web, where's my web test? Flutter web test, cool. So this was another app uh, that was running for test. I'm gonna do the same thing here. Hopefully it doesn't break. If not, we'll just go to samples. Cool. So. Anyways, uh, I got distracted there. What it's now doing is it's actually, please build start. Great. All right, cool, we're not gonna be able to see any of that. Uh, I'm gonna jump ahead. So I'm gonna show you guys samples. So my life coding has failed miserably. Um, so this is an app that is called Dad Jokes. And if you can see the app, and here's what's missing with Flutter Web, and this is what I mean is not production ready yet. You can see that the font size, and this is essentially your app, but scaled to web, right? So if I can run this app on iOS also, right? And it would run just like an iOS app. However, it would run and it would look proper. It would look like a native app. On the web though, it just looks like an app blown up. Now there's a lot of work that you will have to do to actually support looking like a web app, right? So if you're thinking that you can just take your Flutter app that you've built or are building and can just compile it to web, technically, yes, it will work, but it will look ugly like this app, right? And it would work like a web app. I mean, it will look, work like a mobile app. Mobile apps and web apps are fundamentally different. There's a lot of different paradigms and UI techniques that you use. And so this isn't a simple, I'm gonna compile it everywhere. There's a lot of work that's going to be involved. With that said, it works just like a mobile app, right? Uh, just like an app that you expect it to. So as I click new joke, there's new jokes being generated here. And what it's doing is it's actually connecting to an API do, using the HTTP framework and doing all the work that you would normally just do, right, in a mobile app. So when you think of it that way, it's great. The UI definitely needs to be changed. If I were to resize this, looks just like a mobile app, right? And so that's one of the big caveats of Flutter Web. Uh, you will have to do a lot of work. It's not just a one size, one click size fit all solution. Um, so yes, we'll get back to that. So with this, you know, you can move your mobile app to web. Now, like I said, there's a UI thing, but there's also a really bigger thing that's missing here where you won't have access to everything that the mobile app has access to, right? you won't have access to uh, like the device uh, vibrator or the device uh, you know, permissions, getting the cell phone number, anything that you normally expect that, like a GPS, you won't have access to all this information, right? Flutter Web doesn't currently support all that. 
So what Flutter Web is really, really good for is really uh, UI heavy apps that aren't using a lot of device features, right? If you have an, if say Uber built uh, their app in Flutter, they can't just go cool Flutter build for Chrome and deploy it on the web. There's so many things that are missing. So you won't be able to build a fully functioning app just yet. What is it going to take to get to that point? Well, all these frameworks that exist already for mobile, like GPS and stuff, all those frameworks have to be ported over to the web. So there's a big effort right now to port all this stuff over, right? It's fluid and high performing. Um, and so fluid just means it's going to run as fast as JavaScript runs in your browser, right? So whether Chrome runs JavaScript really fast, high performance, it's going to be really high performing depending on how you write your code. If you write shitty code, it's gonna run slow. Uh, but if you write good code and if you're you know, taking advantage of Flutter and you know, state management and all that stuff, your app's gonna run well. There's one thing I wanna point out. How many people remember Flash, right? This is basically like Flash, right? Everything old is new again, okay? So remember Flash, the promise was if you install the Flash player, whatever you write is gonna run everywhere. But it just wasn't exactly uh, like web, right? So if you look at the source code for what's being generated here, it is HTML and CSS, so that's a good thing. Flash was a plugin you installed. However, this HTML and CSS is very obfuscated and it's not, it's not some HTML CSS that you can manually go in and edit, right? So don't expect to build a Flutter web app and then open up that JavaScript and HTML file that's generated and add more stuff to it, right? Technically, you probably can get away adding like analytics widgets and intercom and all sorts of other chatbot, whatever stuff happens on a page. Don't expect to go in and edit stuff, right? So this isn't, uh, this is, that's what I mean, this is like Flash, you know, when there's a Flash file, you can't just go and edit all that stuff. So this is what's being generated. There's a lot of canvas transformations happening here. And one of the things that the Flutter team is working on is trying to make this accessible. The web should be accessible, so should mobile apps, and Flutter's kind of made mobile accessible now. But on the web, you can't really copy and paste this text. I can't right click and copy this text, right? So there's a lot of things that are missing here, and that's because if you look at the source code here, if you can find it actually, because it's so, actually I can't even dig in. There's so many deeply nested layers here that the browser actually doesn't know this is text. It just thinks it's like a canvas and there's a text object underneath it that's being rendered. So it's even, even Chrome Dev Tools is getting confused trying to understand where that text is. So that's the type of HTML that's being generated. You will never be able to edit it off-site other than Flutter. So keep that in mind. And responsive. So responsive, I can make it look like a mobile app blown up or I can actually add a lot of code in uh, that says, great, if I'm running on a device that is you know, 800 pixels wide, then try to add this widget here and also have a button here, right? So you can make it fully uh, customizable that way, which is actually kind of cool because then your app can run on a tablet natively, like an iPad Pro, right? So keep that in mind when you're developing. Just don't think that you're designing for the web. You're probably designing for a tablet resolution also. So you know that's great there. In terms of the stack, this is how Flutter used to be. Uh, you had all these widgets there, uh, then you had this rendering engine, et cetera, et cetera, all this like, you know, deep stuff that you probably never worked with. And then you had the shell, all the very hardcore computer science stuff, right? That's like actually figuring out how to render the engine, uh, render the widgets, make sure that they're not gonna you know, run out of memory, et cetera, et cetera. So what they did was they said, cool, let's keep that entire framework level stuff because we can already compile that to JavaScript and just add some code there that actually interprets that and adds it to the DOM. So if you go back and you look at the source code and you try this, you'll see that it's not HTML, it's not standard HTML temp, uh, elements, right? It's like an fl-canvas, fl-button. There's a lot of stuff that's happening there that's very custom to Flutter. It's not just putting on a HTML button. So one code base, multiple platforms, I touched on this, um, where you know, if you're expecting to have Firebase, all that stuff automatically run on Flutter Web, it's probably not going to happen. Uh, probably will happen uh, when we get closer to launch, but as of today, it's not happening. Um, 
So how do you get started? If you're an Android developer already, uh, you can get started uh, with Flutter by going to Flutter.io or flutter.dev slash docs. Just search Flutter for Android developers on Google. This is a long link, right? And you can take all your Android existing Android skills and bring that over to Flutter. But if you're an iOS developer, you can do the same thing, right? And it's the exact same documentation, but with iOS code where it says, how do I create a button in Flutter? Well, this is how you do it, right? And on and on and on. And the same thing for web developers. You can do the same thing over and over again. So we talked about that. Because we kind of screwed up on our demo there, I'm going to show you some demos about hot reload. Um, so how many people haven't used Flutter here? A lot. So I'm going to talk about hot reload. And hot reload is one of those topics that ex ex uh, works on mobile as well as the web. Now the web hot reload doesn't exactly work what you expect it to be, but I'll tell you about that in a second. So let's go back to my code here. Uh, go back to my other sample app. Web Project Ohio. So now I'm going to run it on iOS. Flutter run. And what Flutter run does, it just finds the most um, currently running emulator and it's going to deploy it there. And that happens to be my iOS uh, simulator here. So I'm going to run it here. And now what it's doing is taking my code and it's compiling it. If this were to work, if my machine wasn't screwing up uh, for Chrome, then it would do the exact same thing. And actually, my machine screwing up is a good indication why Flutter Web is not yet ready. Uh, this was working in the morning and nothing changed. So there's probably some configuration detail that just happened to update itself uh, as I was connecting to the internet and it kind of broke that build. But that's okay. So here's a Flutter app. Uh, one of the great things about Flutter is hot reload. So I'm going to press one, two, three here, and you can see this app change. Right? You can see the counter go up. Now, if my developer, uh, my designer comes up to me and says, hey, Faisal, you got the colors wrong of the app, in a typical design develop cycle on Android and iOS, I would have to make that change of the color and rebuild my entire app and then deploy it on the phone. With Flutter, I can do that instantaneously. So I can go find where the color is, color.blue right here, and I can change that to colors.red. I'm gonna save it, and as soon as I save it, it changes the color of the app, right? If I was doing web development, I, all I have to do is actually go to the Chrome page and hit refresh, right? So it's not gonna push these changes up in real time, I just have to hit refresh. Now, that's cool, but what about more advanced stuff? So I'm gonna add another text object here. I'm gonna say, uh, Flutter web you failed me. Okay, I'm gonna hit save, and then you can see that it added that to the text. Now, during this entire development cycle, here's something interesting that you might not have noticed. That number seven has stayed the same. And that is because when Flutter does, when I do hot reload, it doesn't get rid of the state. So this is great for developing very complicated apps. Right? Imagine you're six levels deep, you're holding on to an OAuth token, and you want to make a call to a server. And you realize that there's a null pointer error somewhere. Right? In typical, you're going to have to restart the app, go through the whole seven flows again, just to get to that point, and then realize you made another silly mistake. And so here, your state stays static uh, as you're developing, and so you, you can keep continue to develop without uh, losing your entire state. What you can also do, is if I press this plus button, you can see that it's going eight, nine, and 10. I can actually change the implementation of this method. So I can go here and I can say counter is e counter plus plus. I'm gonna say counter is equal to counter times five. I'm gonna save it. And now I'm gonna hit plus. And you can see 50, 250, on and on and on and on, right? So very easily, I can add a lot of changes. Now, here's where hot reload is really crazy. I can go on to the web, and here's a question that my friend asked. And this guy kind of a segue into the Flutter community also and how helpful they are. Um, it's one of the most helpful communities out there. If you're, learning, if you're trying to get into a community, Flutter's community is super helpful. So my friend asked this question a while ago. How do you, two years and four months ago, 
Um, how do you do an, uh, an equivalent of a Flutter relative layout in Flutter? How do you do that? And he posted a screenshot and he said, this is my app right now in iOS. And I'm trying to build, a, and I have an Android background, but I don't want to build two apps. So Faisal has told me about uh, Flutter and I've been sold, so how do I do this in Flutter? And he posted this question and here's the screenshot of his iOS app. Someone from the Flutter team, Colin Jackson, came on and he explained to Tofik, uh, that's his name, uh, Tofik, this is how you do relative layout in Flutter. And then he showed a screenshot which seemed to be exactly the same screenshot that Tofik had posted up. However, this was done in Flutter. And then he posted the entire code for that UI. So that was very helpful. And this, this kind of stuff happens a lot in the Flutter community. They're out to help you. Uh, they want to make sure that you're successful. So they'll go out of their way and they'll actually you know, write a UI for you if that means that you can go ahead and learn and contribute to the community more. And so going back to Flutter Hot Reload, I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this code right here, right off Stack Overflow, copy it. I'm going to come here and I'm going to open up my emulator here. All right, this is a stunt that I do. I'm going to delete this entire app. App is deleted. This is, this is it. There's nothing here. I'm going to paste this code. I'm going to save it. I'm going to let it hot reload. And the entire app has changed, right? With Flutter Web or Flutter Hot Reload, you can do stuff like this, right? You can do really extremely rapid application development. So if you find snippets of code on the web, if you find snippets of code on GitHub, you can really try them out really, really quickly, right? Um, and not only is this a screenshot, just to make sure, I can actually interact with this app, right? And it's slow, it's slow here because it's running in emulation mode. When you actually compile it to your device, it actually runs 60 frames per second, extremely fast. Um, and you know, everything is active. Now, I'm gonna try running this on web one more time because that was my entire demo, copying and pasting this and running it on the web. So I'm gonna try it one more time. Hopefully it works. Let's see what happens. Uh, Flutter devices, let's just make sure it detects Chrome. I'm so annoyed it didn't work. Okay, so uh, let's just make sure I'm using the same commands. Uh, come on, where's Flutter Chrome? Okay, let's just go. Sublime. Yeah, Flutter run D Chrome. Did I? Maybe, but. Oh, okay, well, that's fine. Um, that's probably a typo, but here, Flutter create dot, someone said it, it already has Flutter web support, uh, which is why I don't need to. If you're using an existing project uh, and you wanna add Flutter support, you can do Flutter create dot and it will add, create a web folder. Unfortunately, not working. I have no idea what's happening. I'm gonna do one more thing here and I'm gonna do a Flutter upgrade. And what a Flutter upgrade does is it goes out and fetches the latest SDK from Flutter. So maybe something broke uh, during this time. And so let's just see what happens. But anyways, going back to hot reload, this is the type of stuff you can do. You can do very fast, rapid application development. And this is the same type of stuff you can take to the web, right? When it's fully ready, you'll be able to do all this. But what I recommend is if you haven't explored Flutter, if you're thinking about learning something new, you can learn Flutter very quickly, right? And what reason why you can learn this very quickly is Dart on its own is a very boring language, right? If you've ever done any sort of Java development, Python, any sort of modern application development other than assembly, you can probably learn Dart very, very quickly, right? So give yourself a weekend, don't watch Netflix and just learn Dart. And then you'll be able to develop a Flutter app uh, in record time, right? Because you don't have, you don't need a lot uh, to build a Flutter app and what you'll soon realize is because your app is working on Android and iOS, you'll start to think about the possibilities of what you can do with your app now. And that's typically what the life cycle is when I see Flutter developers. They're like, ah, oh, you know, I don't wanna learn something new, it's too complicated. You know, cause they've learned Android and iOS. Then they spend a weekend, they learn Dart and they're like, wow, I already knew this language, it was so easy. Then they learn Flutter and it's just like amazing. Like I can't believe I haven't been developing with this uh, all this time. So this is still, it's only 56%. I'm not gonna wait for it. Let's just move on. Uh, that's annoying, it's all good. 
it happens. Cool. All right, so actually we're at the Q&A part because my demos were cut short. So if anyone has questions, I'd love to answer them. Yes. Not locally. Uh, there's a lot of online options. Um, that you can run like a Mac server and stuff, but unfortunately nothing locally. There's a talk on it on GitHub, on the GitHub discussion. I'm not sure what the answer is to that yet. I'm pretty sure they'll do it. I mean, Google, Google phone, Pixel 4, uh, but nothing yet. Yeah. Any other questions? Yes. Okay, so here, here's why Flutter was, was named Flutter. So they had Sky, they said, okay, we need a name. So they opened up a Google spreadsheet and they looked, went down and found, looked at all the companies that they've acquired in the past. Just to see, they, didn't want, they wanted to save some money and not incorporate a new name. You know, Google wanted to save a couple dollars. And so they just found a name that said, cool, Flutter. This is a name that, of a company, of a gesture, 3D gesture recognition company we bought in 2011. Let's just use this name. And so they had the domain, they had everything, they said, awesome, let's just use that. That is where the name comes from. Nothing else, right? Uh, there, wasn't a, there wasn't a lot of thought behind it. I mean, I'm sure there was, but it wasn't like, let's do a lot of market research and come up with flutter. It's just flutter. Yeah. Any, yes? Technically, you can do everything via the help of plugins. Okay, so if you find that Flutter can't do something, like Flutter doesn't have out of the box support for accessing GPS uh, or you know accessing the low level SQL drivers or whatever on a phone. But there's plugins for it, right? And this is the best time to start because there's plugins for everything now. Uh, if you were starting like two years ago, like a lot of you know the early Flutter guys were. Uh, there was nothing, right? It was very annoying to get anything done. But then a lot of people banded together with a lot of plugins. And so if you want to access uh, you know, the, the, the phone number of a device, the device ID and stuff, there's plugins for that. To find all these plugins, there's a website called pub.dev, right? And on pub.dev, this is like the NPM of the Flutter world, right? It's like a cache repository. So to your question, if I want to access the GPS, there's a plugin for GPS here, right? If I want to access um, probably, what's another very low level device thing? Um, storage, right? Exactly. There's Firebase storage, but then there's Flutter Secure storage. What Flutter Secure storage is, is on iOS it uses Keychain. On an Android it uses the uh, Key Store that's available in Android 4.3 and up. Right, so you're getting support for all this stuff out of the box just by using a plugin. And the interface is Dart, so to me saying you already know Dart, like I think anyone who's done any sort of programming here should know what's happening in these lines of code here. It's creating a new Flutter object, secure store object, and it's reading that value and it's writing to that uh, storage, right? So this is how simple Dart is. Uh, you kind of already know it um, if you've done any like programming. Any other questions? Yes. Yes. So it's a command line. You go uh, terminal, new terminal, and then you type in flutter devices. Oh, I spelled it. Devices. Okay, it's waiting. There's another flutter command line. But it would end up outputting the devices. Yes? No, I, I totally forgot. I totally forgot. Actually, let's see. I think we've killed enough time. No, not yet. Pardon? Yeah. We've already done. Any other questions? Yes? Yeah, so I know it's a priority for them, right? They kind of gone out public and have said it. So typically if you look at what has happened with Flutter in the past, they don't kind of leave things for like decades, 
uh, five years or something. They announced Sky, then a year later they announced it's gonna be Flutter and it's beta, it's alpha now. Then very quick they said beta, right? And so the only insight I have is this. When Flutter was about to hit 1.0, they announced a program called the White Glove Program as they call it internally, where they asked big companies and very unique projects to apply and they will help them uh, build their Flutter app, right? And the Flutter team about two months ago had done the same thing with Flutter Web, right? So with just that knowledge, I think it's about a year away or less uh, because what they do in this program, if my friend who's in the program is, they, it's not that they have access to anything extra, it's that when you run into issues, they kind of jump on it and they fix it and they build the SDK around these problems. So they look at, you know, my friends did a music app. So they had a music app in the program, they had like a, uh, a very traffic heavy real time app, Google Maps, and so they focused on these different problem sets. So this what they're doing right now with Flutter Web. I know one app that's definitely in there, which is a app called Reflectly. Um, and so Reflectly is this very, very popular uh, Flutter app for iOS and Android, you can download it. Uh, and it's a note taking journal for mental health, right? And they wrote a blog post about, you know, it took us five years or six years and we ported this app to the web. So I'm sure that they're in this program right now working with the Flutter team to make sure that Reflectly looks amazing on the web. So it's probably a year away. Example. So I do recommend you use Flutter Web, run into issues. Just use Flutter in general, run into issues, uh, and then post them on GitHub, right? Typically, you won't run into a lot of issues when you're developing for mobile now, uh, unless you're developing something on like the, the bleeding edge of technology right now. Most of the problems have been solved, but for Flutter Web, basic stuff was, isn't there, right? It's very hard right now, for example, to uh, change the font on Flutter Web. There's no accessibility. So if you have these use cases, run into them, post it on GitHub issues, and guaranteed someone gets back to you. And they will either merge your issue with something that's already pre-existing or actually contact you and understand your use case more. So Flutter team is like super good to help you. Frameworks how? So, there is a, uh, a, there's a way to, there's a thing called Flutter Add to App, right? That's officially supported by the Flutter team that you can take your pre-existing Android or iOS app and add Flutter to it. It's very rudimentary right now um, and it's really intended for large enterprises and the group Flutter team like actually helps you out there one to one, uh, but you can kind of do it. Yeah. I saw another question. Hand over. Yes. Uh, KI? No. I, no. I, I, yeah. Guess what? Flutter upgrade fixed my demo. Look at this. This is the same app. This is Tofix same app, the UI that we found running on Flutter on the web, right? And so, wow, amazing, right? So as you can see, here it looks just like the iOS version. But when you run it as like a web app, it's there. And there's some stuff that's missing here. So you can see it's still interactive. Everything's working great. However, if you notice, compared to the, the iOS version, uh, look at the icons there on the left. It's kind of broken, right? So this is a bug that actually I filed before where it's not able to recycle the list view properly. And it's reusing the current list when it comes to images only. Because the text is actually different. Uh, but the image is staying the same. So there's issues like this that will crop up, right? But I can actually go in now and I can you know, start making change Toki songs to uh, Ohio songs, save it. It will do a performing hot reload and you can see at the top it changes to Ohio songs, right? So I can do the same type of development really fast and then I can do the same thing 
for iOS, where if I just you know run the run the other emulator and connect it hot reload to the iOS thing, I can just push up the same changes. So as you can see, it's one code base running on all different platforms uh, with some issues right now. Exactly. Yes, right? There's a, Flutter has a thing called media query. If you've ever done any CSS. So you essentially just put a media query object widget in and say media query, if this is uh, a phone, then display this layout. If this is thing, then this has a width of 600, et cetera. Flutter is single event loop. Um, and so it's a lot like Node.js. At the same time, you can create multi-threads called isolates uh, that you can actually get it to do lots of heavy work. So if you're downloading like a 100 megabyte JSON file, you can actually spawn a separate VM instance that will go ahead and do all that work. I actually don't know how that works for web yet. I have read that eventually it'll create like web workers and shared workers, but right now I don't think it's supported. But in Flutter in general, you can do multi-threaded that way. But in, Typically, you're never really doing that. You're using async and await, which is in a single event loop, kind of putting your code on a different um, stack and executing some other code while it is also that comes back, right? So there's a lot of good write-ups on how a single event model works, so you can kind of look into that. Uh, any other questions? Okay, I, there's one question that typically everyone asks that I will answer. Uh, first time anyone's asked me, how is Flutter different from React Native? Does anyone want to know the answer or should I just ignore it? Okay, cool. So uh, React Native and Flutter, both amazing technologies. If React Native works for you, go ahead and use it. Uh, so the difference is this. Flutter, the, the, the philosophy that Flutter says is they've built their own rendering engine. Everything that you write, Flutter team draws onto the screen. Okay, so this has advantages and disadvantages. The advantage is that your app looks identical on phones that are old, phones that are made from different manufacturers. You know, Samsung is notorious for adding a lot of weird padding and stuff to UI elements. HTC in the past did a lot of this. And so your app will look consistent. Um, the con is that it adds a little bit of weight to your app. Uh, now, that's debatable. It's probably not a lot of weight. But if you're really building for like, um, you know, an emerging market app that has like only one 512 megabytes of RAM, then Flutter might not be the best choice for you. Uh, React Native probably is, because the way React Native works is it has a little VM that's running on the system, and as your JavaScript executes, it says, cool, uh, Faisal wants a button, I'm going to create an Android button onto screen, right? So it's using Android's uh, UI framework. Now, if Android decides to change its UI, or if the manufacturers change their UI, you're gonna run into a lot of issues. If the screen size is unconventional, you're gonna run into a lot of issues. I know a company reached out to me, a massive company that has like 100 million installs on Android and iOS, and they said, we wanna use Flutter because we tried using React Native, and they have a big market in the Philippines. And so we pushed out our app to a small section of that market, and the app looked terrible. Right? It looks great on our Pixel phones, our, all these phones that we have here, but the phones that they have in the Philippines and the weird screen sizes and all sorts of restrictions that are happening on the UI there, our app looks horrible. We have to pull it. So can Flutter solve this problem for us? Right? So it's a great uh, reason versus React versus Flutter there. Cool. With that said, I'm going to put up uh, my information. If you guys have any questions, feel free to email me or add me on Twitter, um, and yeah, thank you for the talk. Thank you for listening to me. <laughs>